All right, in this video, we're going to talk about anaerobic training and kind of link it to some other videos we've done. So with anaerobic training, we're training without oxygen. And what I mean by this is it's not that you're not breathing, it's just you don't need oxygen to help generate your ATP. So these tend to be intense exercises, really high intensity, um, short duration. So short duration exercises and uh, normally the max, like the max you're going to go time wise is about two minutes before you have to stop and rest again. So anything over two minutes then is going to have a large aerobic component to it so it's not purely anaerobic. So um, that's why we say that the, the max here is about two minutes because it all depends on the energy system that you're using. Um, if you have watched some of the other videos we have the ATP CP system and that's going to generate energy for short duration exercise anywhere from about two seconds to ten seconds it's going to generate the energy so typically what happens is in the first two seconds and I'll draw this down here so this will help make sense of everything in case you haven't seen the other video video so this is two seconds right here so for the first two seconds you're just running off that immediate source of ATP within the muscle so after that the ATP CP system kicks in and so we're using creatine phosphate to replenish the ATP stores because once we use up that ATP we're gonna have a lot of ADP and I won't go in this too much because that's a whole separate video but essentially you're using creatine phosphate to replace the energy stores and that's gonna last around 10 seconds so we're around the 10 second mark here and around the two minute mark so after that one fatigues glycolysis kicks in we start breaking down glucose to generate our energy and it starts to fade away um, around the two minute level and anything over two minutes really anything over five minutes is continuous and repetitive the aerobic system starts to kick in and generate a lot of our our energy so anything continuous and repetitive um, is primarily the aerobic system but the intensity can't be too high these are really intense exercises right here but these all work together so for the Let's just say we're going out for a jog for the first two seconds. The eight, we're running off the ATP stored in the muscle, and then the ATP CP system keeps us going, and then glycolysis kicks in, and we can talk about aerobic aerobic glycolysis. So if it's continuous and repetitive, and the intensity is not too high, then the aerobic system is kicking in. But there's also anaerobic glycolysis, which is what I'm about to talk about. So you have anaerobic glycolysis and so there we're breaking down glucose so C6H12O6 and I'm not going to get any more complex than that but the, here's here's a glucose this is a monosaccharide and we're breaking it down to generate ATP so this is substrate phosphorylation and if you watch some of the other videos that'll make more sense if you'll watch them in order from glycolysis all the way through cellular respiration through the Krebs cycle and an oxidative phosphorylation if you'll and the electron transport chain if you'll watch all of those videos this will make more sense but I'm not going to get too complex here because I'm just trying to describe this process so we have anaerobic glycolysis we're using glucose to generate our ATP and we're netting about to ATP and we're using substrate phosphorylation to directly generate the ATP and so the reason I'm kind of stressing on directly there's also called oxidative phosphorylation which happens in the electron transport chain where we're indirectly generating ATP actually it happens in the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain so this is substrate level phosphorylation so substrate phosphorylation all right, so there we have the ATP CP system, and then we have anaerobic glycolysis. This is going to last anywhere for about 10 seconds. Let me actually write it up here. So 
So this is about 10 seconds, no more than that. Some books say 10 to 12 seconds. It just depends on the literature. Uh, this is not going to last any more than two minutes. So if you want an example of these activities, we would have like sprinting here and um, we would have something like push-ups for one minute, lunges for two minutes. I mean, it, you're, you're definitely going to fatigue around the two-minute mark if you do lunges for two minutes. So that would be anaerobic glycolysis. Now these are all linked to muscle fiber types. And so if all we ever did, and actually you can link these also to um, some of the health related components. So this right here would be muscle strength. If all you ever did is muscle strength activities, you'd be using the ATP CP system. If all you ever did was muscle endurance activities, I'm just abbreviating that then you would use anaerobic glycolysis to generate your energy. And when we talk about the aerobic system, if you were using the aerobic system to generate your ATP, you would be using cardiorespiratory endurance training. So those all can be linked to the health-related components if you've seen some of the other videos. So let me talk over here real quick about different muscle fiber types. So for the ATP CP system, if all you ever did was muscle strength activities, you're going to develop fast twitch muscle. So big, bulky muscle that can store a lot of ATP in it. So the muscle fibers are huge and you can store a lot of ATP there. Um, so you have different types of fast twitch and I'm just going to mention two right now. So we have fast twitch glycolytic and fast twitch oxidative glycolytic. And will be important and we'll talk about oxidation reduction later but fast twitch glycolytic fast twitch oxidative glycolytic so this would be for muscle strength and the ATP CP system ATP CP system this would be for muscle endurance so fast twitch oxidative glycolytic and we'll talk about these in future I'll have a whole video about fast twitch and our different muscle fiber types this would be glycolysis here or the glycolytic energy system. So, and let's see here. You also have slow twitch, but we won't talk about that for right now. So, this would be linked here. So, your fast twitch ox oxidative glycolytic would be anaerobic glycolysis, and this one here would be more the ATP CP system. So, for the, you would develop more fast twitch glycolytic. This fast twitch oxidative glycolytic is not as big and bulky as fast twitch glycolytic. So, and it has a lot more capillary innervation. It's a lot more fatigue resistant. The motor neuron is not as large as with fast twitch glycolytic. But we'll get that. We'll get to that in future videos. One other thing I want to talk about before um, we move further and, and talk about training zones. Let's talk a little bit about lactate threshold LT I'll just abbreviate there so if I have to write it down again so this is when the lactic acid acid starts to build up faster than it can be removed so this also has to do with buffering capacity. So sodium bicarbonate is baking soda. Your body stores sodium bicarbonate in the blood. So your lactate threshold has a lot to do with how fast lactic acid is building up in the blood and your buffering capacity and how much sodium bicarbonate you have stored in the blood. Because if too much builds up in the blood, you don't have enough sodium bicarbonate to buffer it. Um, you, the pH level in your blood is going to drop. So we have the pH level is normally about 7.3 in the blood. So if it drops much below that, you're going to become nauseous. 
and, and we'll talk about this as a whole separate video later on but just know that when you're doing anaerobic tra training you want to improve your lactate threshold so you want to improve that and normally how you're going to do that is by doing some sort of interval training where you're going to build up a lot of lactic acid and you're going to recover so that it clears and so recovery time is extremely important in interval training so we want interval training to improve our lactate threshold because it's going to include recovery time and allow us to clear some of that lactic acid out of the blood and use sodium bicarbonate to buffer it and when I'm talking about buffering I'm kind of talking about um, using sodium bicarbonate to neutralize that acid it's the same as the volcano experiment you used when you were in grade school where you had an acid which was vinegar and you dumped baking soda into it and and then all this foam came out where you were buffering that acid so we were neutralizing that acid with this sodium bicarbonate and the same thing happens when you take antacids to to deal with excess um, stomach acid so the same thing happens there so lactate threshold is extremely important you want to improve that and I'm gonna make a whole video about lactate threshold and how you improve it um, by doing forms of interval training or by doing muscle endurance training and how you can build up sodium bicarbonate and your body will start to produce more the more um, interval training that you do or the more anaerobic training you do so the performance improvements for glycolysis anaerobic glycolysis are a lot different than um, the performance changes that happen as a result of the ATP CP system and we'll talk about that later you also have something called anaerobic threshold and again this is going to be part of the lactate threshold but I just want to mention it here since we're talking threshold since we're talking about anaerobic training and that's a point at which the um, blood lactate accumulates so much that you can't clear it so um, onset blood lactate accumulation accumulation and that's all I'm going to touch on that for right now since I'm going to make a separate video about it so let's go back over this real quick so we have anaerobic training and it's going to be intense short duration no more than two minutes um, we can break that down into the AP, ATP CP system that's going to last about 10 seconds and then from 10 seconds to 2 minutes anaerobic glycolysis is kicking in and supplying us most of the energy. Um, if all we ever did was um, training where we're relying on muscle strength we're going to develop fast twitch glycolytic muscle which is really explosive. If all we ever did was muscle endurance training using glycolysis we would develop fast twitch oxidative glycolytic and the best way to improve um, the anaerobic system is to try to improve your lactic threshold, your ability to buffer and neutralize lactic acid and clear it out of the bloodstream. And the best way to do that is through some form of interval training. 